So, uh, hi class, we're here today to look at an example uh, of mo horizontal motion, and we're going to use the kinematic equations to solve this. So I was at the zoo the other day, and I happened to be at the enclosure for the cheetahs, uh, one of my favorite, favorite animals. Now, most of the day, of course, they're sleeping, but um, when they do run, they are uh, an incredible sight to see. So naturally, uh, as I looked at the cheetahs, uh, I had two natural questions to ask. So naturally, those two questions were, what is the acceleration of a cheetah? And the second question I thought of was, will it have reached its top speed by the time it reaches its prey? Now, by top speed here, uh, I'm using this 45 miles per hour, which uh, to note is not really the true top speed of a cheetah which is somewhere closer to 60 or 70 miles per hour. So we take a look at some of the information we're given. Uh, we notice that it takes about two and a half seconds to reach this 45 miles per hour, or 72 kilometers per hour. And they like to get within 50 feet, or about 15 meters, of their prey. OK, so here's kind of what I envision. Uh, the first thing is we have our cheetah. He's kind of waiting here in the I guess he's waiting in the weeds or whatever he does to kind of sneak up on his prey. And, uh, you know, they're going to start basically at rest. They're not going to, uh, you know, really be moving very fast there. And then they're going to leap out. They're going to start to run. They're going to get faster and faster and faster. And at some point, the uh, cheetah reaches this top speed for this problem, uh, which again isn't really a top speed of a cheetah, but for our purposes, uh, that was 72 kilometers per hour. Now, in order to, to do that, a cheetah must accelerate. And that is actually what we're trying to find in this problem. Uh, he's going to cover some distance, so he would have some displacement from his original position, which we do not know at this point either. And we are told that it will take, uh, I believe it was two and a half seconds to do this. Okay, so one of the first things I want to do, uh, besides drawing the picture, is I want to define myself a positive direction. I notice that all my vectors that I've drawn here are to the right. So it's just, I think, convenient to define the rightward direction as my positive direction. Also something else I want to note um, that when we do any kind of kinematics problem just write down all five kinematics quantities here um, and ask yourself do I know it or don't I know it and we're going to kind of summarize that here in just a moment. So we've already said that we know that this um, cheat is going to start at rest so that's zero meters per second we know that he's going to attain some speed of 72 kilometers per hour, which uh, for our purposes, we're going to need to convert. I'm not going to do that conversion here. But when you do convert it, it's going to equal 20 meters per second. The acceleration is, in fact, here for this first part of the problem, what we're trying to find. Our displacement, delta x, is unknown, and t equals two and a half seconds. So as I kind of sort through my equations, uh, coming up with a strategy on how to actually solve this problem, I see one equation that sticks out in my mind. And that equation is that the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Now when I look at a change in velocity, Change of velocity is really a final velocity minus an original velocity. Since my original velocity is zero, it's going to actually cancel out, leaving me with just Vf. Likewise, a change in time is going to be a final time minus an original time. I usually start my stopwatch at zero seconds, so therefore, um, whoops, and this is actually a mistake, that needs to be a Vf. Let me erase that and fix it. All right, why are you not erasing? It's not erasing, but I will change that and make it uh, VF. 
All right, so as I substitute my numbers in, um, I need to substitute in the 20 meters per second for my final velocity and the two and a half seconds for the time it takes to reach the 20 meters per second. If I do the math with this, I'll end up with eight meters per second squared. Okay, so here we are in um, part B. And part B, um, if we revisit what we know, we just found that we now know eight meters per second squared for acceleration. Uh, we also know that the prey, which I'm going to denote here as a pizza because I really can't draw a wild, wildebeest or gazelle. So we're going to pretend this is a um, wildebeest and gazelle pizza. And uh, we're also making the assumption that this pizza, this prey, is stationary. We were told that that is 15 meters away. So in this problem, my new find is actually going to be the delta x, the displacement. And uh, in other words, what we're trying to find here is, does the, sorry, does the cheetah um, actually reach the 15 meters before or after it reaches the 72 miles or kilometers per hour? So we're going to have to think about how to find delta x. Uh, so let's think about some equations. So an equation that pops into my mind after I've eliminated some would be this equation right here, where delta x equals the initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. All right, I'm running out of room over here, but that's a squared. Uh, you have to trust me on that. Um, we can make a similar uh, substitution to this like I did previously, where the initial velocity is zero, that is going to actually cancel out this entire term. And that will actually let me with delta x equals one half times a t squared. So let's go substitute our numbers in and solve this out. So as I take a look here, um, substituting into my equation. Of course, the acceleration we've already found from the part A is 8 meters per second squared. The time it takes to accelerate is 2.5 seconds. Uh, a couple things to note here. First of all, be careful. Squaring, you're squaring just the time. Um, and also, don't forget to square. I see a lot of students forget, uh, when they use this equation, to forget this, they forget to square the time. A second thing to note is these are units, okay? This doesn't tell us to square the eight. It simply is the units of the acceleration. Uh, in fact, you don't really even have to write the units in uh, when you substitute. I just like to do this as a, just a reminder, did I convert everything into what it should be? Uh, so after we do the um, math under my calculator, I end up finding that the displacement is 25 meters. So let's take a look at how we can respond to the question that we were asked at the beginning. Okay, so uh, in the first one, it's pretty pretty basic. Uh, we already found that the acceleration was eight meters per second squared, um, and that's actually that's pretty fast. That's actually almost as fast as gravity accelerates things, um, and we'll learn a little, little bit more about that later. Um, but the second thing is we need to interpret what we found out about this twenty-five meters here. Now keep in mind. This delta x represented how long, or how far, I guess I should say, how far it took to reach the 72 kilometers per hour. So since we noticed that this delta x is greater than the distance of the prey, um, that basically means the cheetah is not going to be traveling the 72 kilometers per hour when it reaches the prey, because it takes, uh, it takes actually a further distance to actually reach that 72 kilometers per hour. So uh, basically what it comes down to is when it gets to 15 meters, um, he will actually not be traveling the, the, at this top speed. Um, now, the, the question that I wonder, and it's not something I'm going to do in this video, but is how fast it is the cheetah going when it gets to the prey? So that might be something you might want to think about and solve on your own.